Here I have a table that contains two stocks, Coca-Cola and McDonald's. The table also contains real-time data that I extracted from a website. If I go to this spreadsheet and I add some more stocks, let's say Pepsi, Microsoft and Apple, and I go back to this spreadsheet and I refresh my query, the data for these stocks will be extracted and loaded into this table. Hello everyone, my name is Christian and today let's imagine that we started investing in stocks and we want to extract some real-time data from web for tracking our portfolio. That's right, in this video we are going to do some web scraping. Before we start web scraping, I would like to point out a few things. Firstly, we want to use convert to stock feature of Excel. It is a great tool, but we can't get always all the data that we want, in example, dividends, ex-dividend dates, and so on. And also, the purpose of the tutorial is to do web scraping. Secondly, Power Query is a great tool, but in my opinion, when it comes to web scraping, it is not very strong. On some websites, it manages to extract tables, but on the others, it doesn't identify anything. I think that on some websites with simpler structures such as Wikipedia, it works great. But on more complex websites, unfortunately, it cannot. For this tutorial, I tried to fetch data from Yahoo Finance, but I didn't succeed. The only data that I got was the HTML code that I couldn't use for what I needed. I also tried Google Finance. Power Query managed to identify some tables, but unfortunately, they were not relevant for the stocks data that I needed. After a few attempts, I managed to find a website called MarketWatch. From it, I was able to get a table that contained key data for a stock. I assume that this structure or the backend is simple enough and Power Query manages to identify the tables. The website works now with Power Query, but maybe in the future its structure will get more complex and Power Query won't be able to extract anything, just like with Yahoo Finance. Okay, so now let's extract the data. If you want to import data from a website, first we need to copy the URL of the website. So let's go to the website that I found. Let's search for the Coca-Cola stock. And here I see a table that contains key data for this stock. To me, it looks relevant. So we will copy the URL to our Excel file and we are going to extract this table. With the copied URL, we need to get to our Excel file, click on data and click on from web. If you don't have the icon in here, you can go to get data from other sources and then from web. Paste your URL in here and click OK. I have already checked all these tables that Power Query has identified and the table that we are going to extract will be table 7 because it contains the key data that we have found in this portion of the web page. So now we will load it. Now we have the data extracted for the Coca-Cola stock, but this is only one stock. How do we import more stocks at the same time? For this, the website that we are scraping needs to have consistent URL for the stock and I'll show you in a while what I mean by that. If we go back to our website, we can see that the URL of the website looks like a path to a folder, just like on our computer. Actually, the URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator and it is indeed the path to a specific resource. Here we have the website name, then after the first slash we have the investing, which is a folder from the website server. Next one is stock and then the path goes to a Coca-Cola resource. So in theory, if we change this uh, KO to the abbreviation for another stock, let's say McDonald's, we get to a web page uh, with a McDonald's uh, stock. So I think that without this portion of the URL, the website will still work. And it does indeed. So this is the way we will get the data from more stock at once. So we'll go back to our 
Coca-Cola stock information and we'll copy this URL and we'll go back to our Excel file. Here in the fetch URL spreadsheet, we are going to paste the URL in here and we are going to write the stocks abbreviation in here. We will add a header, we'll call it stock tick and here URL. We will select these four cells, we will click on insert, table, check that my table has headers is checked on and then click OK. So now we have created here a table. We are going to name this table fetch URL. Now we have a stock and we have the URL that contains the data for it. But this is a hard coded URL. If we add a new stock to this table, let's say McDonald's, we have the same URL for the Coca-Cola. So we need to create a dynamic URL using this cell. We are going to do that by using the concatenation formula of Excel. We are going to write here equal sign concat open round brackets open quotations here and here just right before the stock name. Afterwards we are going to separate the first text of the concatenation formula. You can see in this portion of the concatenation formula we have text 1 and text 2 and both texts are separated by a semicolon. Depending on your Excel uh, localization you might have a simple comma. Make sure you use the right symbol for separating the text within this formula. So here I will just add the cell that contains Coca-Cola and then I will close the bracket. So now you can see that we have dynamic URL. If we add more stocks, let's say Pepsi and Microsoft, the URL will adapt for each stock. For now, I'll just leave Coca-Cola and McDonald's. You might remember that a few minutes ago we created a query that extracted the data from web for the Coca-Cola stock. Now we are going to use that query to create a function that will be used as a sample function for extracting and cleaning the data for all the other stocks that we are going to add into this table. So let's go to query and connection, right click and edit. Here let's delete this change type step and let's rename query as fx url and now we need to add some coding in here so go to home tab and click on advanced editor here right above the led text open the round brackets and write the name of the table that we created which contains the name of the stock and the url so it is called fetch url after the round brackets type in s table and insert an arrow and here instead of this static URL that goes to the web page with the data for the coca-cola stock we are going to write again the name of our table that we created now let's click done and close and load so now our query has been transformed into a function that we are going to call in the query that we are going to create in a moment. Let's go back to our fetch URL spreadsheet, click on any cell of this table, click on data tab, from table and range. If you don't have the icon in here, go to get data, from other sources, from table slash range. We will rename our query to fetch data and we will delete this change type step. Now we will add the function that we have just created. Let's go to add column and click on invoke custom function. We will call our column 
fetch stock and the function we are going to call is fx url the one that we have just created here we select url which is the column that contains the url of our stocks and then click ok now i don't think we need the url column anymore so we'll delete it and then we can expand the fetch stock column make sure you uncheck use original column name as prefix and then click ok as you can see for the coca-cola stock we have 16 rows of data and for the mcdonald's stock we have also 16 rows of data this is the data that was extracted from the website for each stock that was contained into the table to be honest i don't really like how this table looks like so we'll have to clean it up a little bit but to save some time check out the link in the description of the video and search for the fetch data script open it up select all the code that is in here copy it go back to your excel file go to home tab advanced editor delete all the code that is written in here and paste the code that you copied from the link and now click done now the script has added all the required cleaning steps so it is left to close and load the data and everything is ready after a while the query has loaded and now if we go to our fetch url spreadsheet and let's write in here some new stocks such as pepsi microsoft apple kraft heinz altria group whatever and go back to our fetch data go to the data tab and refresh all the data so after a few hundred years power query has managed to extract the data for all the stocks that we added cleaned it and loaded it into this table if you're curious about the cleaning steps that i have made in this query and you want to learn more about them leave a comment under the video and i'll create a separate tutorial for that thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video leave it a like subscribe to the channel for more content like that it means a lot see you